continuing the series um, that we're doing over the summer called When Pigs Fly. And, um, and really what we're looking at is taking our impossible situations into the possibility of God. And last week, I had, I had you guys turn around and say to each other, God wants to use you. And then you had to say, God wants to use me. Anyone remember that? Yay, some in the house. Wonderful. So I thought I would start off this week by, fi uh, by finding out if there was anything that happened during the week where you felt like God used you. Anything? Nothing? The <laughs> <laughs> question last week we had this moment where I had people turn around and, and say God wants to use you oh. and then you had to say about yourself God wants to use me. So maybe we'll start with that right now. God wants to use me. You want to say that? Right? Was there anything that happened during the week where you encouraged someone or you prayed for someone? Yes. Okay. So, so now I'm starting to, I'm hearing, of course, of course, yes. Do you think it's possible, it's in the realm of possibility that God used you in those prayers and in that encouragement at all? Yes. Roxanne, you want to share something in life? We don't, re we don't realize 
what God is doing and what is what what's unfolding. Hey. Oh, I do have something. My brother-in-law. This was his third heart attack, and it was it's about three months ago. They didn't think he was going to make it. When I saw him in the hospital, I honestly didn't think he was going to make it. So we just prayed over him, prayed over him. There's no damage. This is his third heart attack. That's extraordinary. Wow. So when he went back in, he had a, uh, what do they call it, an echocardiogram and mm -hmm. whatever else they did. They, they said, you're a walking miracle. Mm -hmm. well, we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing, that's, that's absolutely beautiful to hear. Bobby has a restored, clean heart. That's amazing. Wonderful. Now, I, I want to just, I'm, I'm going to just start from this point and, and move into today's message. Uh, one of our points of impossibility when pigs fly, one of the points is that God will use other people but won't use me. And that's really something that, that it's, it's, it's a lie, it's a myth, but it's something that's got to be broken in our thinking, in our understanding, and there's something... Um, you, you have to set your intention. Faith is followed with works, with action, with obedience. And as you do, God meets you on the way. Last week we looked at 10 lepers who wanted healing and, and Jesus said, go and on your way you will be cleansed. You've got to step out and see what God is going to do. So a few weeks ago I was in the city with Savannah. She was doing a dance intensive. And I shared with you that I started doing a, a prayer walk every time, you know, this long run from the subway to the studio. And it was amazing just setting the intention of praying, um, how you start to tune in to things around you from God's perspective. Now, over the summer, something that is my all-time favorite to do is to go to the beach. And we live about a mile away from um, a beach on the, on the sound. So if we don't have anything going on in the evening, uh, two or three times a week I'll pack a picnic and go down five five city and we'll have a simple dinner and watch the sunset. About a hundred meters out in the water is a huge rock. And it is something that I do every time um, is I swim out to the rock. Many of you know that last year, at the beginning of last year, I, I had seizures. I was actually admitted as a stroke patient. And um, Chris and I were, were talking about it this week. And uh, it, it's really, uh, so it's, it's, it's a life-changing moment. You know, you said for a day I didn't know you. And when I went to the, the follow-up with the neurologist, the neurologist said to me, you, you can never um, bath by yourself, don't go swimming by yourself. And, and there was all of these limitations on confinements that she was saying, you know, if you want to live, this is the way to do it. And I looked at her and I said, I've never lived a fear-based life. So that rock last year became a declaration of, of faith for me. I swam out to the rock whether Chris was with me or not. And I, I just made that. So this year, I'm taking my swimming to the rock is now, I'm just like I do prayer works, I do prayer swims. And there are specific people and specific situations I'm praying for on, on my way out to the rock. All right, that, that's a freebie. That's by the side. So last weekend was a very hot weekend, and um, we went down for a swim at lunchtime Saturday and in the evening again. I got out onto the rock, and you, you've got to say, if you see me cut up in the summer, it's because I'm climbing up on barnacles. <laughs> so I climb up on the rock, and I meet, there's another woman standing on the rock. And we land up talking. Uh, she, she asked me what I do. And she asked me a very interesting question. She said, do you love all people? Because my, my sister is one of those Christian monks, and she's got a lot of rules about, I said, we love all people. And I thought, how amazing. I'm standing on the rock, talking about the rock. 
So that evening we go out again and both Chris and I are on the rock and two young guys come up and join us on the rock and the guy has got a tattoos on, on, on his chest. Without him I am nothing. So I looked at him and I said, uh, I, I, I mentioned the, the scripture and it, it turns out he's a pastor from, from the city in New York uh, from, called Church NYC, a church in Times Square. And um, they had come out for the day and they were going back um, to, to go to service the next morning. So I just said, well, you know, if you need a crash pad, come, come and stay with us. You know, we, we've reached out to them. But when you open yourself to be user-friendly in the hands of God, there are just many moments in your life that because you wake up to God, God begins to show in simple ways, like helping someone who's lost on the subway, like encouraging someone who's standing on a rock wondering if all Christians are nuts. Well, probably. <laughs> in different ways. But I would encourage you that God has a special plan. He has specific instances where he's just waiting for you to wake up, tune in, because he wants to work uh, not only in you, but through you. So in John chapter 2, we read of the very first miracle that Jesus performed. John 2 verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding in, the Cana, of Gal in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Now if you can just picture hosting a wedding, and you run out of food or wine, what is the primary response? Run to the store and get more. <laughs> What's that? Party over. Party over. Quite honestly, if you're the host of the wedding, it's panic. It's panic and it's an embarrassment and you will do anything to fix it, right? So I love this little sidebar moment. Here we are with Jesus. He's introducing his public ministry and he's at a wedding and his mother comes to him and says, they have no wine. Now, exactly. If someone comes to you and says they have no wine, someone, you know, if you're at a party, then it's like, okay, let's move on to the next hot spot. Uh, Jesus looks at him and uh, looks at his mother and says, it is not my time. What, what is that to do with me? Uh, she looks back at him and I've pictured this. And she turns to the servants. It's like she knew before he ever did anything how he was going to do this. She turns to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. And this is our memory verse in the bulletin this week. I gave you a really short, easy memory verse. Do whatever he tells you. So, it's really quite remarkable. What Jesus told the servants to do was to line up the water pots where they serve people water. And he, he said to the servants, fill up the water pots with water. So you can imagine this would have taken a little bit of time. Actually, very interesting. There were six water pots that they had to fill with water. Each water pot had 18, held between 18 and 27 gallons of water. So you can imagine it took a little bit of time. The servants filled it up with water. And you can also imagine I just, I just had to. You know, you know how guys gather around a barbecue? And they, they always talk, you know, flipping the meat. There, there's always this chitter chatter going on around the barbecue. I can just imagine the same kind of thing unfolding with the water pots. The servants are filling up. The guys, the disciples are standing, talking. And they're wondering what on earth is going to happen now. And then I wonder who took the first cup? Who dipped the first cup in and, you know, did it transform just in that moment? Quite extraordinary, really, that the very first 
act, miraculous, supernatural act that Jesus performed was with wine, water into wine. So 27, 18 to 27 gallons of water per water pot translates to about anywhere between 6 and 10 cases of wine per water pot. We're talking quite a large amount of water. So let's unpack this a little bit. Firstly, miracles are signposts. When you look at all the miracles of Jesus in his ministry, every miracle was a signpost pointing the way to the nature of Jesus Christ, showing who he really is. And it was also pointing to the nature of the kingdom of God, which Jesus spent his entire ministry talking about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So how on earth were people, what on earth was Jesus showing by turning water into wine? You know, when you think of all the miracles, when you talk about the signs that follow, Jesus healed, Jesus delivered, um, Jesus fed thousands, was this a life and death situation? And it, and it really, it seems almost frivolous that you would launch your public ministry by turning water into wine. I mean, my goodness me. <laughs> the water pots were actually a symbol of the failure of religion. The wine, you know, later the reports came out that the host was questioned. Why did you say it's the best wine for lost? The wine indicated the sweetness of the life of, in Jesus Christ. I mean, you can really picture two things. One is when you taste really good wine and Jesus stands before you and he says, I am the wine. I am the living water. I am the wine. While you're tasting what he has done, it becomes a different level of reality to uh, someone just saying, oh well, yeah I am. I'm, I, I am eternal life. There's a translation. Jesus was the embodiment of that living water that became, miraculously became wine in the people's cups. Jesus was the new wine at the wedding. And the signpost of this miracle was the newness of life that only Jesus could bring. Just as people held in a cup, there's a newness of life that only Jesus can bring. And there's a beautiful aspect, element of this miracle that um, we mustn't overlook. And that is, a wedding is all about the celebration of life and love. And you, you see this right through the ministry of Jesus. You know, he was taking on stuffy, religious, legalistic religiosity. He was taking it on and saying, that is not who I am. And everything he was doing, he was doing to show the life, the liberty, the joy that is in him. And it's a beautiful reminder for us. You know, here's the signpost. This is who Jesus really is. Miracles occur when God invades the impossible. A miracle happens when the natural order of things is suspended. And God moves in in a different way. It is not a natural process for water to be turned into wine. You can stand in a garage and say, I'm a car, I'm a car, I'm a car. You will not become a car. Um, you're gonna, you can do the same thing with water. It's not going to become uh, wine. Running out of wine at a wedding speaks to the unexpected calamities of life. The things that go beyond our ability to plan for. Running out of wine at a wedding and Jesus coming up and meeting that particular calamity is a reminder to all of us that he will meet us in our own calamities. He will meet us in our own disappointments. So often we think, well, 
my issues, my struggles are not really that important. They're greater issues. You know, when you think of someone like Kelly being on life support for seven weeks, then you, you feel almost guilty, embarrassed to talk about your, your, your own disappointments, your own struggles. Until you think about Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding to make sure someone's wedding was idyllic, was a beautiful memory for all of time, right? So the insight from this miracle is that our struggles are God's opportunities. And as Ronnie mentioned, you know, we have to pray and continue to pray until the hand of God is clearly seen. Our prayer group called PUSH, pray until something happens. You keep going. But it's a wonderful way to flip the challenges you are currently facing and actually take that into your prayer time and say, okay, God, what are you going to do? I can't wait to see what you're going to do. What's, what are you planning here? You better be planning something now, God. Because this struggle, this calamity can't just stay uh, as a trouble point in my life. It's got to become an opportunity for you. And I had mentioned this a few weeks ago, and I just want to put it back in your thinking. Never put a period where God has a comma. Never say, well, this is over. This is it. This is done. I'm washed up. It's over and out. Never put a period where God has a comma. Because his ways are not our ways. His timing is not our timing. We'd love to fix that very often. But don't lose the plot. Wait on God's timing. Wait on God's timing. So the other interesting thing with this miracle is that Jesus could have spoken and said, Water, let there be wine. But instead he had his, the servants of the, of the house fill up the water pots. And, and this, to me, speaks of the fact that they had to enter into the work Jesus was going to do. You know, it's one thing to have water pots filled and you dip your, your cup and there's wine. It's another thing to see people come and fill up, take the time to fill up these six water pots, to, to take the time and the labor. And there's something very important for us here is that some work of God will only happen as we enter into the work of God with Him. Some works of God will only happen when we participate with Him. So there are some people who are waiting for a healing, they are waiting to, for relief from disappointment, from broken hearts, that will only come as we put our hand in the hand of Jesus. And we partner with Jesus and say, I might not have the words, but I'm going to go. I'm going to speak. I'm going to pray. I'm going to encourage. I'm going to build up. Are you, are you starting? I don't want you to be comfortable today. I, I, I want you to get hungry to see what God can do as you say yes to work with Him. So very simply, today, let's make room for the miracle that God wants to do. And first of all, I, I want to look at um, Isaiah 54. To make room for the miracle, first of all, you need to increase your expectation in God. Isaiah 54 verse 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left. And this is a prophetic word, but in the word it, it says clearly, you go and enlarge the place of your tent. Don't expect God to come in and do everything. You and I have to get hungry for more of God. So making room for the miracle to unfold in us as a church community, to unfold through our lives in the communities that we touch we need to increase our expectation in God. You know, James says, James 4 verse 2, you have not because? Yes. Come on. We've got to get into the face of God a bit. We've got to actually learn to ask 
because we had a good, good father. Increase your expectation in God. There's three, three steps here. The one is to assess honestly where, you, where you're at in your faith walk. We, uh, we came to the table, we examined our hearts. There's stuff, there's work that God wants to do in us. Clean us out, work us over, so that we are more user-friendly in His hands. Some of us, we have to assess, we only have a little faith. But that little bit of faith in the hands of God, He who has faith as small as a mustard seed, can do what? It can move mountains. That's right. Can move mountains. It's not about you. It's about how you partner with God. Now, while we're talking about water into wine and assessing our own lives, you know, I can't help but think about some recovery work. We all have habits that we need to examine, right? We all have habits that we need to take a healthy evaluation and assessment. And even if you are perfect, and I'm sure there's some really amazingly perfect people in the house. I just don't know one. <laughs> so, so what happens is we, 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 start, we, we start with good intentions. And then, you know, your good intentions can get lost on the way to the refrigerator. Right? Your good intentions are probably really good when the refrigerator is empty. It's so much easier to fast when there's nothing in that fridge, right? Come on, guys, help me out here. So, if we're going to increase our expectation in God, we've got to have a very honest, vertical relationship where we open up our lives to self-examination and examination by God. Because He wants to use vessels that are pure. And I, I can take steps, I can take action steps, but only God can come and cleanse the heart to bring something beautiful out of our lives. To make room, increase your expectation in God. First of all, assess honestly where you're at. Secondly, ask God to create an expectation in you. And you know, it's a very simple prayer to take into the week. Lord, make me hungry for more of you. Make me hungry. Make me hungry. I, I, you've, you've heard this from me. I, I pray this over you. I speak this over you with great love and great respect. May you have no peace until you start stepping out in what God has for you to do. May you have no peace <laughs> until you start doing what God has for you. And that's spoken as a well-intentioned blessing over your life. So assess our lives, ask God to create an expectation, and thirdly, allow the Holy Spirit access in your life. Open up to the Holy Spirit. Because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not just by will and intentions, but it is by the power of the Spirit of God that these things become possible. With man, this is impossible, but with God, this is possible. Not by the power of one, not by the might of many are these things possible, but by the Spirit of God. So, how do we allow access to the Holy Spirit? You do have to take time to declare your intention. You do have to take time to open yourself to the Spirit of God. Simple prayer, a simple declaration. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, have your way. It means you have to actually extend your understanding of who the Spirit is. The teacher, the comforter, the guide. The parakletos. The one who is like the guide dog leading a blind person. And don't we all just stumble and fall sometimes unless we have the wisdom and the insight of the Holy Spirit. Increase your expectation and the second aspect of making room for the miracles that are still to unfold 
comes from the mother of Jesus. Do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. So instead of spending hours asking, oh God, is it you? Should I do this? Step out in faith and see how God shows up. Do whatever he tells you to do. Some simple thoughts here. It means we need to cultivate an awareness, a mindfulness of God's presence in everyday life. You know, if you go for a walk on the beach, if you're a beach lover, or in the woods, you can't be in nature for too long without thinking about the author of all of this. You, you, you can't be out there and not start tuning into presence. So what I'm really inviting you to do is tune into presence. Practice every day this week. And it's, it's boy, it's not churchy stuff. It's actually just waking up to God all around you. Is someone in your life who's driving you crazy? Anyone? Got anyone driving you crazy? What do you do? I saw one couple raise hands. It's not each other. I'm not looking at anyone. What do you do with that one person? Is you start looking for the Jesus in them. God help you. But when you start looking for the image of God in that person, you're going to find something of God. You're going to find the grace to love, to forgive. When we begin to look for the image of God, we are made in the image of God. Some of us need a little bit more editing than others. <laughs> Cultivate your awareness to God. Recognize his promptings. Well, is God, is God telling me, you know, do I reach out and encourage this person? Does it really matter if you reach out and you encourage someone and they're in a great place and they don't need the encouragement? Does it really matter if you missed it? You, you hear what I'm saying? The more we step out in faith, what happens is, as you set your attention, just like my swimming to the rock, I'm praying for specific people. When I get on the rock, I'm, I'm ready to talk to people about Jesus. Why? Because I've, I've been talking to Him. So there's something that's very natural that unfolds. So do what He tells you to do. And thirdly, step out in faith. And we know the scripture, Hebrews 11. Verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So as you step out in faith, God is going to reward you. As you step out in obedience and say, okay, this is what God has called me to do. And you step out, you may not feel like holier than thou. You may not feel like you've got it all together. You don't need to. Step out in obedience, God is going to meet you. Last week we looked at the scripture where Jesus called disciples to be with him. And he called his followers to heal the sick just like he healed the sick. To deliver people from demonization just like he did. He is our way maker. And we are to follow in his way. So you are instruments in the hands of the living God that he is sharpening, that he's positioning to use, to work mightily through you. So I want to finish today by asking you to turn to the person next to you and say, God wants to use you. God wants to use you this week. Not next year, or the following year, all of that, but he wants to use you this week. Won't you stand with me? And I'm going to invite you just to open your hands to receive from the Lord today. And Lord, you know the heart of every person here. And, and through the course of, of this morning, I, I've just been so aware that some of your sheep need refreshing and renewing in the Spirit of God. 
need encouragement, Lord, for their day-to-day -day struggles. And so, Lord, I pray first of all just for a, a refreshing, a renewing in spirit, in mind, in body, in soul. I pray, Spirit of God, that you would come to breathe newness of life into the lives of your people. And Lord, there are, are places that are, are hidden over, perhaps because we felt like there's been too many disappointments, too many hurts. And I pray, Spirit of God, that you would go into those cracked crevices that are just waiting for the touch of God. And I ask, Lord, that you would bring a fresh touch of God, that the healing oil, the power of the Spirit of God would be poured out. And then I pray, Lord, that you would touch the eyes of your people, that you would give a vision for the instruments that you are shaping, for the vessels that you are molding, that you would give your people vision for what you have for them to do. And so I pray for a divine impetus in the Spirit of God. I pray for, I pray for a divine fueling that you would use this small community to the power and the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to invite Chan and Keith, would you mind coming up? And we're going to close with that song again, My Feet on the Rock.